Hi everyone, Ryan here from Fight Game Analysis, and today we are going to be talking about the fight that just wrapped up between Conor Ben and Chris Van Heerden. Before we jump into that, if you've been enjoying the content, please go ahead and click on the like button and also subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate your support. All right, Conor Ben. So he came out there and did what many of us expected to do. Blew this guy out of the water early knockout. Not really anything that we didn't expect. Sit comes in when you come in as a 16, 17 to 1 favorite. Everybody expects you to come out there and look impressive. Now, the real question with this guy's career, in, in my mind, you know, for a while, not anymore, but for a while, was, you know, how exactly was he going to look? Because I always apply a little bit more scrutiny to a man when he has a famous father. So when your father's Nigel Ben, I'm going to always apply a little bit more scrutiny than if just you're, you're just a no-name or you're kind of coming up on your own, right? Because when a guy has a famous father, he always has the ability to come in with a little bit less talent, come in with a little bit less work ethic, and still make some money. He's still, he's still going to be able to put the butts in the seats. He's still going to be able to generate some buzz, even if he's not quite there, not quite doing what he's supposed to be doing. So he gets a little bit more scrutiny in my eyes. But Conor Ben, man, he's legit. He's been doing absolutely everything he's supposed to do. You know he's been putting in the work in the gym because we see it in the ring. You know that he's been staying dedicated because we see him progressing and getting better. Now look, or you go back, you look early on in his career, he looked exactly like you'd expect from a man early in his career. Right, a little bit rougher on the edges, still a lot of work to do, didn't really utilize the jab and things like he was supposed to, need to get his shots a little bit straighter, but he's, he's gotten all that down. He's continually worked and improved. Look at his last three fights prior to this one. Samuel Vargas, Adrian Ganados, Chris Algieri. Knocks two of those guys out, gets him out of there. Other one, he goes the distance in a, in a performance that he wished he would have looked better, but dominated the whole fight for the most part. Right Now, those three men... Are journeymen at this point, but at one point in their career, they were contenders. When you look at the, who those three people fought, you're talking about the likes of Virgil Ortiz Jr., Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, Rusin Provotnikov, Manny Pacquiao. They got a lot of really impressive names on their resume. So when you got a young guy like Conor Ben coming up, you want to put him against those types of guys. You want to see him against a veteran, someone who's got some tricks, got a high ring IQ, been in there with some real talent, but... He's not quite that dangerous at this point in his career anymore. Doesn't have the speed, been knocked out a few times, so his punch resistance is down, things like that. It's, it's, it's the perfect matchup, old line versus the young line. It's what a promoter wants to see. It's how you continually progress your guy and move him up. And Eddie Hearn, in the post-fight interview, made the comment. He said, the progression for Conor Ben has been perfect. And look, man, it was, it was a way of patting himself on the back a little bit, <laughs> but it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. As a promoter, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to continually, slowly but surely, Move your guy up the ranks so that he can continue to get wins, build experience, build confidence, and get him ready for, for the highest stage. Now, he comes out here. He, he wasn't patient, in my opinion. You know, I, I get it. He knew he probably had nothing to worry about. He knew that he was going to come out and get the big win. He wasn't worried about the punches coming back at him and everything, even though in, in the first round, Van Heeren was landing some shots. It's because Ben wasn't working behind the jab. He was just coming out, just all aggression, all explosiveness, constantly trying to land the big left hook in the right hand. And like I said, he knew what was there. He knew, he knew what type of fight this was. He knew that he was there to, to look impressive in that way. And that's exactly what he did. Right? Lands that right hand, lands a few follow-up shots. Doesn't need any more than one knockdown. The guy's done, that's it. Plants on his face and he's, and he's done. Good for him. Comes out in the post-fight interview, which is really, in my mind, it's funny because in my mind, it's like, that's what this was about. He comes out as a 17-1 to favorite. Everyone knows he's going to win. Really what it's about is how good you're going to look and what are you going to say in the post-fight. So now he's got the mic in the post-fight and he's calling out the biggest names, right? The, the Keith Thurman, the Adrian Broners, uh, the Kel Brooks. He got, he's got Amir Khan in the ring with him, which I wasn't happy to see, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I'm an Amir Khan fan from back in the day, back when he was training at the wild card with Manny Pacquiao and underneath Freddie Roach. So... He, you know, he's long past that point. He's taken a lot of punishment. He's, he's been in there with some big punchers. I don't want to see Amir Khan get punched in the face anymore. I think that, you know, his time has passed. He, he, he did a lot of very good things in the sport. He won world titles. He was in the Olympics. Like, just ride off into the sunset, man, and be done with it. So I, I, I wasn't really happy to see that. But if he wants to get in there with Kell Brook, even though Kell Brook is another guy who's past his prime, you know, he's, he's not past his prime in the same way that Amir Khan is. Personally, I'd love to see him in there against Adrian Broner. I think that'd be a great fight. I think, I, think he would, I think that would be awesome. You've got Adrian Broner, a guy who's been in there with some of the top guys in the division. So he's got that ring IQ. He's got that experience. He's still got those fast hands. He's still, he still has a little bit of pop. Not too much. Not a 147. 
So you go back and you look at the record, all his big knockouts happened at like 135 pounds, but he still got some pop at 147. But he's flat-footed. Never handled pressure all that well. Coming off a long layoff. Right? So those are things that could really help counter Ben. But, you know, you figure if, 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 if he goes, if, if uh, Broner's willing to travel, it'll probably be a big payday. You know, I don't know if he wanted to fight over here. I don't know if Ben would, would generate those types of sales over here. He's not a big name in America yet, but I know over there, you know, he'll put some people in the seats. So it would be, it would be a very interesting fight to see stylistically. My guess, not knowing all the numbers, is that it would probably make sense for both men financially. Definitely makes sense in the career progression of Conor Ben. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next. So let me know what you guys think. Did, were you impressed by this performance? Did you expect anything else? Did you expect this to go the distance? Did you expect it to be a little more tough? What do you think of the way that he came out there and handled himself? And what do you think's next? What do you want to see next for Conor Ben?